Hello, Storm. Hi, hello, Dee. My first attempt went wrong, but um, this one came through. <laughs> How are you? No, nothing like a um, screen full of snow to go, oh, what am I doing? Okay. All right, let's dive into it, my dear. Yeah. All right. So, all right. Are you seeing your source image and your work in progress? I am. Excellent. Okay, so um, first thing, very well done, the crop that you chose um, to take out all those buildings and everything that were at the top of that. The, um, I think I've got it here still. No, that one. Yes, that. and it was just too much crap and it wasn't yeah. what I wanted. And I think that's really important when you decide uh, what you're painting to just really burrow down into what it is you actually like about it. Yes. Um, yeah, about that image, what's inspiring you. Okay, so the first thing that comes to mind is if we look at this sand in the back here, it's so warm. It's, it, it's kind of a horizontal plane all its own, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it, you could have taken the water up just a little further. Further, but yes, I, I did. I don't think that. that's really the problem. I think the problem, oh, well, what happened there? Oh, okay, went down there. Mm. Me and Photoshop. Um, if we select all of that, oh, that's what's yeah. happening. It's not showing me quite all of the painting. Okay. Make your window a little bit bigger, D. There we go. Um, so I would suggest that that needs to be a whole lot cooler. Cooler? Cooler, yes. yes. So if we come into colour balance and we take... Too warm, it's working against any kind of sense of depth? Yes, it's coming forward. So, so all I've done there, I've taken some red out of it. Right. So I'm going for more a grey that's um, made with raw umber. Um, right. Rather than a warm, burnt sienna -y kind of grey. Okay. I think I'll just take a little bit of that. As, of as opposed to Payne's grey, for example. Yeah, so, so maybe, yes, if, if you got, it's mainly white if you put some raw umber into it to, yeah. to darken it just a little. Um, you might find that that's brown enough to still read as sand. Um, but so cer certainly it needs to be less warm, so less orangey than anything yes. that's happening down the front here. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. I like the fact that you haven't made it a same colour all the way over. You've actually got kind of like a section in the middle that's... Well, you did that. I treated, oh. I treated it all as one. <laughs> and I just oh, really? Yes, oh, okay. so you, you did that lovely variation in there. That was not me. <laughs> uh, okay. No. So I would, would I do that with a glaze? Um, or would I just add some more paint? I'd just add uh, some more paint. Some more paint, um, yeah. Perhaps a little bit of glaze or flow medium in it to, to help it to just flow nicely for you. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just wondering if I move my camera... Yeah, that might that might be better. I think. Okay, live and learn. Hi. Hey, Zoom Zoom meetings, mate. New to all of us. Hi. Okay, Hi. something that also is not helping your depth is see this rock here. Mm. See how large it reads compared to these rocks down here. Yeah. Now, yeah. if, if we go back to the source image, you, you, it's not. You, yeah. Well, it's just not broken up enough. To, it's reading as yeah. one big flat rock. Um, yeah. Because see over here on your source image, so this is the same area over here, you've buried that under the water. So that would be the first thing I would do is to come in here and restate. So take some of the water out of that. So I'm just... Coming around that so I can pick it up. Now this would perhaps be, you'd probably have to paint it white first because you've got beautiful transparent colours in there. And the, the trick is to paint them, to paint them white first so that then you can, yeah. can come over them with the glazes. Right. So if I 
bring up some yellow and bring up some red in that. See how I'm making it orange because red and yellow make orange. Um, so, so the intention is to extend the rock further, reduce the amount of water there. Yes, correct. As, as a first step, yes. All right, so that's sorted. And looks better already. Yeah, it just it just yeah. So so you can achieve perspective in a number of ways. One is this this lovely going off into the distance here. So that's a linear perspective. Anything that's in a straight line when you apply perspective to it, it follows the rules of perspective. So that's given you distance. The scale of things, so that's something, look at, at see Gigantor back here, having a swim mm. the Yeti, mm. and see how small this person is. Mm. So that's, that's something that perhaps needs some attention to. I think your figures overall are a little bit small. If we so you think Gigantor is the right size? And I the think others Gigantor is the scale? right size. Yes. Okay. And the others need to. So unless, unless you can find a way to make this person here look like a child. Um, right, right. At that kind of distance, that's pretty tricky. There used to be a person on the left there, a bigger mm. person. Yeah. But I found it distracting. I've actually painted over it, but it was a better size. So that would have made that one look, was in the same plane as it. So it would have made it look like a child. Okay, I mean? yes, that would you know the, little, the little tiny solitary one on the left there. There was one in the water, but yes, down there somewhere. Yeah. There was one down there in the water that was larger um, and so would have made all the others around it look like a child. Should okay. I put that one back? So one of the things is with all these people on the beach, uh, yes, we need some people on the beach because that's, you know, that, yeah. that places it. Do we need that many? Do, because most of the action here is over here, could we balance that with just a group of slightly larger people here? So maybe five people and one umbrella there. Okay. Yeah, so always, always think in groups, which, which you have done. And the other thing is those people need their shadows. Yes, you notice some of them have got them, but the others not. Yes. Yeah, they all need their shadows. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So one of the things I've, I've learned about perspective is, is to push perspective. So if I just, let me see if I can pick up this pole here. Oh, oh near enough. Very good. And copy that and then paste myself another one. And make it bigger oh. and angle it a little bit. See straight away, so I've exaggerated the difference. So I would need to do this one as well. As well, um, yes. And it would get even bigger. So now I've got another post there. And again, if I make it even bigger, this one oh, yes. might just oh, tilt it slightly that way. Yes. Now yes. see how much more depth that has given us just by making those poles just bigger. Just by doing that, yes. Yeah. So, so that's pushing the perspective and particularly pushing one point perspective. Okay, so what other notes did I make? So what were we going to do about that big fat flat rock? We were just going to add a bit more detail and, and stuff to it? We're going to break it up. Break it up a bit. Yeah, break it up. So see how basically your darks aren't dark enough on that yeah, rock. Yeah. Um, we also need to think about the notion of chicken noodle soup. <clears throat> so, so every painting... If you're struggling with it, this is a really good troubleshoot to apply. So think chicken noodle soup. Every painting needs a great deal of soup. And so that's the passive areas where your eye is not drawn and does not linger. It needs quite a lot of noodles, which is where your eye noodles around and has things to look at. 
and it needs just a little bit of chicken and chicken is your focus area. So where would you think might be chicken on this? Well, you see, that's the problem. I realised that having taken off the top, <coughs> Pardon me. Um, <clears throat> which was inadvertently a focus, um, I didn't really replace it with much of a focus since. I sort of thought the poles might act as the focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think you're on the right track. The poles are really leading us somewhere, aren't they? Yes, and then I realised that we kind of ran out on the focus front. Well, if we, if Not I put much a crop, else is happening. If I put a crop window on there, that yeah. see how that divides us into our thirds, and yeah. it's always good to have the area of focus on one of these spots where the thirds cross over. So yes. we could choose any of those. We could bring it down there. So the area of focus should have our biggest contrast, our lightest lights, and our darkest darks. So that's not really going to work there because we have a secondary focus over here for the, yeah. the fence. I think you're on the money. I think this area here should become our focus. Right. So up, up here, around, just, just under Gigantor there. Yes, yes. So if we, let me select some of that area. So if I come in here, so just do a, a loose selection there and adjust the contrast. I'll oh, go away. <coughs> Honestly. <laughs> well, right, I can't so use it at all, so I'm impressed with what you can do with it. <laughs> so I'm playing with, see, that's 100% that's contrast. See how that would be too bold. Yeah. But if I make it a little lighter and a little more contrasty, see how that started to direct our attention? Yes. There? Yes. So, yes. I mean, it's also outlined at the moment, which we don't want. See how just that little bit of, of brighter colour, harder edge is working there to draw our eye. So we'd also here, so um, this water, so I've just got white here. Might make it a little bit bigger. That's better. And make it completely opaque. That's better. So see how I'm trying to add some more horizontal marks in right. there because that's going to give us a little bit more surface on the water. So just yeah. that little bit more focus there helps. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, yeah. now some, some movement. marks on here. So, yeah, we need um, definitely not black. But quite a dark colour. Let's go with some kind of dark brown. So we would need to really work in here. Each rock we would need to see the, um, the where edges. it connects to the sea, so the, the shadow underneath it. So this right. this kind of mark making. Um, right. You would use what could you use for this? Uh, a stencil could work quite nicely. Or probably, you're, you're a dab hand with a palette knife storm. What about just some knife work? Yes, yes. Um, to just break this up. Do make sure that most of your marks tend ah. to the horizontal. Horizontal, yes. Yeah, because you're want, <clears throat> it is flat. So I would yes. say that that dark brown's probably a little bit too dark for there. Yeah. And remember to crevices and things. Yes. And remember to angularize your marks. So mm -hmm. so make them really angular and sharp and straight rather than let them curve. Now when when you're doing when you're doing cracks 
cracks in rocks. One of the ways that's nice to make, that makes it work very well, hang on, I need to make this bigger, <clears throat> is to come in with light, right beside oh, yeah. the dark. And see how that looks more like a crack there? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so they're really good things to, to actually look up some pictures of cracks in rocks and look at how they respond to the direction of light and what happens there. So if we look at this. It's a fairly unfocused photograph. It has a It is, isn't it? It doesn't perfect. give you a lot of sharp edges. I took it off the television, so it's not high quality. <laughs> that's, that's a creative way to get there good on you uh, on my beach you know i i took it off the tv <laughs> yeah okay yeah. but actually looking at that um i can see what you mean there's there's some white areas down on the bottom the bit that flattens out before the water here no down a bit down a bit to the right a bit down there on the right just oh, there yes See, there's lots of areas of light along there. There before is. Before it gets to the water. And look at how horizontal the marks are in there. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah. They're almost paint strokes already, actually. They are. Yes. Yeah, they are. So maybe that's a, a useful thing to do. Put this image up on your computer screen and make it big so that you can exactly. see all Blow those it up things. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now. It's, it's, it's looking a lot better, isn't it? Yes. So see down here at the front? Yes. So if this is our focus, so we've, we've exaggerated um, all, all the brightness there. So not only the brightness of colour, the brightness of the edges, that kind of stuff. So ironically, the front needs to be darker. It, well, darker and more neutral. So yeah. if, we, if we are to come in here, not a pencil, I don't want a pencil. So if I was to come in here and select, I, I so love the colours that you've chosen, Storm. Thank you. So beautiful um, complementary contrast with basically blues and oranges. So if... If I darken that down, well, that's done it pretty much in one swoop, hasn't it? Yep. So that would be uh, probably a green black in some glaze over that. Okay. And you might need a couple. You, need, you might need a purpley one as well. So maybe a mix of purple and Payne's grey. Okay. That, that looks better already. Yeah, yeah. It, it, that really does focus now on the, on the light on the rocks up further, doesn't mm. it? So that's a very important point is anytime you want bright colours to shine, you need some neutrals beside them. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. And if, if I come... Mm, well, if I come here and... What do I want to do? I want to select not all that. I'm, I'm just trying to get some of the, um, the there we go, some of the darks in the rocks. Yes. Can you copy and paste that? I can, yes. Fantastic. I can on Photoshop. <laughs> You can do anything on Photoshop. Mate, Photoshop's the most amazing thing in the world. You've added some really interesting little orangey squiggles all over the place. Yeah, because that's what I picked up. Yes. I asked it to pick up just that colour. So if I come in here and, and paste those there, so Photoshop keeps warning me that I'm doing weird stuff. Um... <laughs> It's not made can, for us, obviously. Can I adjust it? Oh, yes, look, I can make them darker. Ooh. Yeah, so see how just they're not even in the right places, but see how the bittiness of that has enhanced yes. those rocks? 
Yes. So I'd probably use, um, yeah, I'd probably use a stencil. Maybe the, the Arts Tree Cracks stencil would work to put in some, oh, let's say some texture paste with some burnt sienna in it and uh -huh. some texture paste with some Naples yellow in it. So two separate ones. I have a I have a problem. <laughs> What's that? All my stencils are in France. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All my worthwhile okay. ones. Which is why you see very little stencil work on there. <laughs> so maybe just freeform knife work, but be very happen. conscious that your marks back here must be smaller than your marks yes, than the ones at the foreground. So I'd use those two colours with the texture paste. Pick up both colours on the blade at times so that you get nice striations happening in there. And then while yep. it's wet, I'd spatter that with a mix of burnt sienna and dioxazine purple in some water. With burnt sienna and dioxazine purple? Yes. Yeah, that's for your spatter. <clears throat> And where are we spattering? Over, Over the all rock? the wet stuff that you've just put on there. Over the wet stuff, right. Yeah, so you're, in fact, you're creating a little gesso just suit good. on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if yeah. with rocks, the harder you throw that spatter, the, the more it's going to make lovely little holes in the paint yes. and look yes. really, really rocky. Yes. And, of course, you wouldn't be putting very much of that spatter up here where all the bright colours are. No. You'd be concentrating no. it more over here. More down or yeah. you'd do it as a first step before you came in and brightened up those colours because that way it doesn't matter where the paint goes. True, true. Yes. Right yes. Okay, awesome. so it's, it's looking pretty good, I'd say. It's looking more balanced and it's yeah. certainly got more of a sense of depth. And we're going to get rid of most of those little people, are we? Yes. Yes, let, yeah. let me... Let me get rid of some people. <laughs> do, do, do you have some handy coronavirus? That's right. This is a this is a harmless way of killing people off. <laughs> all right. I just have to merge all my layers to make right. that happen. They're all illegal. Look at them. They're all ganging up on the beach there. They shouldn't be them. <laughs> Gigantor's the only one who's socially distancing. Oh. <laughs> Good on Gigantor. <laughs> when you dull off the um, the beach area, would you try and make the would you try and make it slightly duller still up towards the top? To Let's try see and get what's in our original photo. Sense of beach going away. Well, it becomes paler in the sort it of white. It becomes whiter paler, color. doesn't it? Yes, in a whiter sort of way. But remember, it's got the contrast of the wall and the buildings behind, so we might not be able to use the same. Mm. It might not have the same effect without that reference point. Yes. I would say it doesn't need to change very much at all. And okay. I, I like the variation that you've built into it here. Right. I, and I think that's important that you don't just have, you know, one flat colour and paint the whole thing flat. Um, right. This, that's probably important. See that little bit of, of beach there? Actually, that's a thing. We've got waves out here. Yes. And then and we've, we've got a little bit of a wave at the top there too. We've, yeah. Yeah, so we need, have I got my pencil? No. <laughs> there we go. Sorry about the tsunami, people. See how that little bit of white up there just helps take us through the picture? Yes. So you wouldn't have it as bold a white? as you no. do down in this chicken area, 
you'd probably pop just a touch of Payne's Grey or Ultramarine or something bluish in there to calm mm -hmm. it down a bit. But just a little bit along there to balance just a, it off. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. a little bit. And you, you've done such a nice job, Storm, with all your, um, all your colours here, all your choices there. They're absolutely beautiful. So this purpley tone that's just mm. here, perhaps that would be the one rather than this pinkness here at the front of the Take beach. more purpley up there. Yeah, maybe make that more purple. So let, yes. let me see if I can select a little bit of it. So if we increase the magenta and the blue, whoa, that's scary, isn't it? <laughs> that's a bit scary, yes. That's a bit scary. That now becomes the focus. Yes, but a bit... There but that's, nice. that's, that's better. Nice. And see how... that Okay, so I think that's perhaps what you need, what you need to do. So that very neutral um, brownish-grey yes. at the top yes. and then fade it down to that purpley tone. That's beautiful there. Oh, yes. Very nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, also, don't forget with this rope, it mm -hmm. needs to come much bigger as it comes towards us. So see back here in your reference photo how if you compare the size of the rope there to oh, the yes. size of the rope here. Yes. So that, that will help it come forward too. Yep. Yep. All right, so I'm going to just save this. Okay, and now I'm going to open your original, like where it was when we started this. Okay, so that's where it was. That's where it is now. Oh, yes. Oh, much, 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 much nicer. Yeah. 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 So you did good You've stuff. Yeah, it's going much better. It's much deeper now, isn't it? And a lot yeah. of that is about this chicken because you've yes, already had a lot of lovely, soft, lost edges in there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So off to the shed, you. Off to yes, the paint thing. <laughs> Thank you. Brilliant. <laughs> You're so welcome. It's so Thanks. fun being able to do it like this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. I, I think for for a painter of your caliber, this kind of coaching is really useful because you get a whole lot of things that will take you several hours to do. Um in class, we can't do that because I can only show you the one thing and then you have to do it and we have to wait for it to dry. So, exactly. yeah, I, I think it can yeah. work really well because you, you know, get I think all the things great. in it. Sorry, Star? I think that's great. I agree. And I, but I also think I, I nearly always have a kind of embryonic idea of where it's wrong. Yes. But not a very clear idea of, why or how to fix it um, it's like when we look at drawings of the human body that are wrong and we go i know it's wrong but it's wrong it's wrong it's wrong yes <laughs> where is it wrong how is it wrong yes, yes. <laughs> i yeah. mean i would never have thought of just largening those i knew largening there's another new word there's another uh, word yeah, beginning beginning is one of my best <laughs> I biggen things. I think depthifying. I think that was pretty good. Depthifying is good, yes. <laughs> but just that in in itself made a heck of a difference. Mm. And did you notice that I accidentally have? Well, it wasn't accidental. I've got more pylons than in the original photograph. I did notice that. And mm -hmm. realistically, I think these pylons aren't evenly spaced. I think they've been planted in the rock where there was appropriate rock. Where there was appropriate. So I could have got away without putting the extra one in. You absolutely could. But to me, there seemed to be such a large space that it would, it would, it would, it would ruin the sense of depth completely. Yes. yes. Right? It, because it would, the space would match the space up at the front or even be bigger than it. 
And yes. so I thought, no, I don't know how to solve that without doing them all again. I'll just put another one in. <laughs> um, what about the shadow cast by the rope? Do you want yes, that in? Yes, well, I'll, I, I did have that in. It's basically been covered up. I will go back and put that in. Cast shadows like are one that. of... They're one of those things that you don't necessarily need to put in. Um, I do like this one because it leads us into our photo, uh, our yes. photo point. Focus uh, uh, point. That's what I was trying to say. Yes. So I, I do rather well, like that. Um, that was one of the contributing factors to selecting that particular section of the photograph. Okay. So if that shadow is there from the rope, then obviously the light is coming in. Um, from, from the right, the and the yes. poles would be also casting a shadow. Now, yes, I did I sort of see. vaguely indicate them, but not enough. So the yeah. pole shadow should be much more definite. Yes, much yes, more and remember, the shadow is always just a darker version of the colour it sits on. So a shadow yeah. on a yellow surface looks olive green, for instance. So if you yeah. look at your colour wheel um, to the outside, to the um, shades, yeah, it's. It's always just a darker version of what it sits on. Well, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, um, I'll email you the picture. Would you like a copy of the recording or the edited version? Oh, yes, please. That would be lovely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank